Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. It's week 13. I'm going to go over your questions. Well, not your questions if you're watching this on YouTube. I do appreciate y'all being here, but I'm live on Twitch right now and I'm talking to my chat about DraftKings week 13. We're going to build lineups. We're going to take their questions for the next hour or so, give or take, plus or minus. Uh, they're going to bounce everything that they have off of me in terms of guys that they like, salaries, 2v2s, 3v3s, possibly some strategy questions, bankroll management, anything else, because this is an interesting week on DraftKings with the 100th anniversary how would you say this the hundredth episode the hundredth iteration of the millie maker on DraftKings, and it's a hundred dollar to first place they also have popped up some other tournaments around it at lower price points of a hundred dollars for one single entry fee is out of your uh reach if that's not within your playable bankroll they have some lower uh tournaments as well uh, with pretty good payout structures not like my ideal payout structure but like two hundred thousand to first place for a ten dollar turn it's not so bad so if you want to get involved in the celebration this weekend on DraftKings for week 13, you can. That is how you do it. Appreciate you being here once again this week for this video. Please drop a like on this one before uh, Lock. Let's see if we can get over 700 likes on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Notifications, blah, 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 blah. You guys know the drill, right? It's 2018 and it's YouTube. So why don't we just get to the, get to the chat and see what y'all have to say. Uh, play all the dudes in cash? Yes, every week. Humphreys or Godwin in cash? I prefer Humphrey, Humphreys. Humphreys. Wow. I'm like one minute into the video and I can't speak yet. Uh, so Humphreys is the one that I prefer 50 yards receiving in the last few games and 18% market share uh, in games where he's played with Winston. So when Winston's out there, he gets an 18% market share. So uh, to me, that leads me to him. I think Godwin is also in play, but I prefer Humphreys. Hieroglyphs. I like the spelling of that one. Thank you for the tier one sub. Appreciate you. CMC Barkley uh, and Hyde in cash. I mean, yeah. I think that's going to be a very common trio that you're going to see. Uh, maybe a little bit different now. Maybe Ware's also in the mix there. I think Lindsay's in the mix. I think Aaron Jones is in the mix. There's like seven running backs that I think are extremely playable this week for cash games. Uh, so that's kind of it. Conley thoughts in cash. What's his price this week? Because I know that Sammy Watkins was just ruled out. Conley's 3,800. <sighs> I have to take a look. Give me a second, chat. Let's, let's, let's like dig into this, right? Rotoviz splits app. Let's go here. I'll let you guys do it with me, right? So I'm, I'm doing this. Rotoviz splits. Right here. See? Integrated utilization of the uh, the Google machine right here on stream for you guys. So we're going to go here. We're going to put Conley. Chris Conley. The problem is I think that Watkins has only missed like one game this year, right? In 2018. So we come up with this right here. Yeah, it's one game, right? So it's not really going to be all that. All that much we're not going to know that so assume that conley's going to play less i do there that would be a little bit more this is how you use the splits app thing but like it's more helpful when you have guys that are like in for four games or, or out for five games so he's played less than 15 snaps and missed three games okay so i have to go back and like add all those up i know that uh evan silva just tweeted something out similar to that where he was talking about in games where uh sammy watkins played 15 or less snaps then Tyreek Hill basically has gotten 12 targets a game. And in the games where uh, Sammy Watkins has played 15 or more snaps or 16 or more snaps, he has gotten like seven targets a game. So a massive uptick uh, for Tyreek Hill. Uh, also a massive uptick in terms of snaps and routes run and everything else for Chris Conley moving to this weekend. So, yeah, I think I'd like him more than Aitman. Obviously, he's going to be 300 more, better offensive environment, better quarterback, higher scoring uh, for a similar price. Do I prefer CMC or Gurley? Um, I think CMC is cheaper, which makes me always prefer him. I think that they have a very similar floor and ceiling for this week. Would I pivot off of Barkley or CMC for Lindsay? It's going to depend on the rest of that lineup. Like, there's no move that that just kind of exists in a vacuum, right? Everything has to fit together in such a way that you think you have enough players with a floor, enough players with a ceiling, and enough access to different offenses and things like that. Uh, I want to have, obviously, I think this is a week where you can get your 70 touches at uh, if you're playing three running backs. I think it's entirely viable. 
to go out and get that. Now, whether that's going to be with Gurley, whether that's going to be with CMC, whether that's going to be with Barkley, I think those are the three guys up top. I think that Aaron uh, Jones should see plus or minus two uh, 20 touches. So between 18 and, and 22 touches, probably. I think it's a very realistic range for him. So I think he's in play. Lindsay, you're going to come up a little bit thin on terms of touches, but in terms of efficiency, uh, great efficiency. 5.8 yards per carry. Uh, just seems to bust a big play every single week. Runs really hard. Gets goal line touches a little bit. Obviously, Freeman's back. But in the games that Freeman's been back, he's out touching him 2-1 to one as well. So just kind of what it is. Uh, Lacoste cash game thoughts for a low end tight end. Okay, so Herman is out, and that brings Lacoste back into play, right? So, and and admittedly, if you listen to the Daily Fantasy Edge, we said as soon as we got off that we forgot to talk about this dude. And for twenty five hundred, yeah, I think he's in play. So I'm not expecting like eight targets though. So here's here's the thing: if you're playing him, you understand that he's thin. And you could get a line like this without this, right? So, like, if you're going to play him, realize that, like, six or seven points is something that is entirely realistic. And I think that you have to think about that as well uh, in terms of Braid. But Braid is 1,200 more, right? So everybody was real happy because Braid caught that touchdown in the first drive last weekend. And then now he's got a matchup with Carolina, who's been extremely giving towards uh, opposing tight ends, allowing a lot of catches, allowing a lot of touchdowns on the season to opposing tight ends. But even with Howard out, look at this volume, guys. Three, 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 four. That's just not where they go. And even with Deshaun Jackson out, I think that as much as Winston has looked to his tight ends in the past, I think that the offense is being run in such a manner that they're just not throwing to tight ends as much this year, uh, unless OJ Howard is on the field because he just seems to always be open as big as he is and as athletic as he is. So if you if you ask me Brait or Lacoste, I like Lacoste better because I'm saving 1,200. And I think essentially they're the same play in terms of volume. Rams D.O. Can Cash. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Winston or Cam? Uh, I prefer Winston, but Cam has been very, very good. Uh, top 10 tight end, I think, five of the last six weeks, something along those lines. He's been extremely good. He's just a couple hundred more this week. Uh, is he going to start running the ball around the goal line anymore? That's kind of a, a question. Winston playing in the highest total game. You know that he should, you know, with as much yardage as they get on that team through the air, they don't really have a running back that they're going to hang their hat on. Uh, he does provide upside in terms of rushing touchdowns as well. Uh, chance for a 300-yard bonus on DraftKings is high. I think that uh, he's my preferred cash game quarterback this week. Ellington, Moore, Lindsey versus Humphreys, Galladay, Hyde in DK Cash. The second one. I think the second one's a little bit better. If Hyde's viable, wouldn't Lamar Miller be a better option at home and a favorite? Why are we so excited to play? Like, Lamar Miller had a 97-yard touchdown run, and now everybody wants to play Lamar Miller all of a sudden. This is what I don't get, right? Like, if he doesn't have that island game, if he doesn't have that island game, and he doesn't score a 97-yard touchdown, so that leaves him with 70 yards, what, like 50-something yards or 70-something yards from scrimmage? Without a touchdown? On 13 touches, 11 touches for the night. Why are we falling all over ourselves to play Lamar Miller? And I'm not saying that he can't have a good game. I'm just saying it's still Lamar Miller, guys. So like as soon, and this started happening, and I noticed it in the YouTube comments from the first look lineup. And it started the second that Lamar Miller ran for that touchdown. I started getting comments that said, Hey, Lamar Miller's too cheap for week 13. Like, he ran in a long touchdown. See, Lamar Miller's in play now. And I'm not saying that that's what you're doing. And I'm I'm not getting after you. I'm just saying it's still Lamar Miller, guys. Like, when's the last time you're like, you know what? I can't wait to take, I can't wait to put Lamar Miller in my, in my cash game lineup this week. I'd rather play Hyde at 33. I'd rather play Ware at 4. Uh, I'd rather play Lindsay at 56. Like Lamar Miller falls behind every single one of the other value running backs for me, including Aaron Jones at 6,700. So like, and that doesn't even include the high dollar guys like Barkley and CMC and Gurley and everybody else up top. Even Eckler now with MG3 out, I'd prefer to Lamar Miller. I don't know. <laughs> Camel Cross nailed it. Basically, 100 of his 162 yards came on one play. 
Yeah. He had 13 touches total, including that one play. It's just, it's not my, st I don't know. I've, I, maybe it's my own bias, and maybe he has a second straight outstanding game. I know the matchup is good. They're favored at home and against Cleveland. Uh, so there is possibilities there. I don't know. I just, I can't, I can't buy Lamar Miller on a week where there's so many great running backs. You know? AJ6, thank you for the tier one sub for two months in a row. Appreciate that, man. Ravens running back versus Atlanta. Yeah, but you're not going to get any sort of usage in the pass game, which is really what we like to attack um, when we play running backs against Atlanta, right? Like, we want to get guys are going to catch the ball. And so you look at Gus Edwards, who now looks like he's going to be cleared for this game. No targets. Two straight games where you've seen the lion's share, no targets. Essentially, Gus Edwards is like rostering, right now, Gus Edwards is like rostering LeGarrette Blunt. okay? Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. He's a better LeGarrette Blunt at this point in their career, right? I mean, 6.8 yards per carry the first week that he started with, or didn't start, but played the majority of the snaps with uh, Jackson at the helm and then 118 yards on 5.1 granted against two really 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 terrible defenses and he gets another good matchup here but both of those games were at home this one's on the road albeit on a fast track in a dome um i think he'll i think he'll do fine on the ground i don't think we get the the upside of getting like a guy that gets like four or five targets getting like seven or eight like maybe he gets one target they're just not going to utilize him in the passing game at all so like he he really has to rip it up on the ground uh to be viable and at 4400 last week where he scored 14.8 i was fine with it now it's 4800 it's going to be tougher he's going to have to score a touchdown multiple touchdowns to really smash value blunt had some nice catches on thanksgiving look man i've probably rostered legarrett blunt more on DraftKings than anybody in the history of DraftKings, mostly in 2016 <laughs> when every week he seemed to have a, at least a touchdown in 100 yards can you tell me Levitan's lineup? He hasn't told me, so uh, and he never tells me. So, no, I can't. But definitely ping him on Twitter. Goff versus Newton for cash. I'll take Newton there. Does Ware become playable after the Hunt video? Yes. Ware is in play now at 4K if, if Kareem Hunt is suspended for this game on the weekend. Montgomery got three catches last week. Yeah, but he's not going to play a ton of snaps. So, like, now you're taking the guy that, like, I think for tournaments, Montgomery is interesting because he's super cheap, but know that you're not going to get more than like eight or maybe nine touches out of the guy. So he's a very thin play with upside. Realize that it's a very, very, like a not even a cash game viable play, but a tournament sprinkle type play. Lindsey Galladay or CMC Ellington in cash? That's close. I really just want CMC, so I'm going to say CMC Ellington there. Uh, thoughts on Rams receivers, Woods best for cash. I would prefer Cooks this week. Cooks has seen the biggest uptick in terms of target market share uh, and catches since Cooper Cup went out. It's not that he's playing the Cup role, but they've changed that offense a little bit to more encompass uh, Cooks' strengths. And then coming off the huge game and coming off the bye week, he's seen 12 targets in each of the last two games. So I'm riding Cooks uh, at 7K. <clears throat> Miami sucks versus the run. Lewis, Henry, any love in GPP? Um, I don't know. Lewis is the preferred guy there, but I'm not really excited about those. There's 13 games this weekend, and a lot of them are super high totals uh, with you know very exploitable defenses and everything else that like you can play... A normal GPP allocation, like at least I can play my normal GPP allocation across 150 lineups and have all great plays and not have to reach uh, for guys like Ty Montgomery or reach for guys like Henry or, you know, Humphreys or Ellington. I prefer Humphreys. Titans are playing the Jets. That's true. Sometimes I just answer the questions as they come. Lindsay or Galladay, Davis or Reynolds? Uh, I think Lindsay's production is probably more secure. Uh, so I'm probably going to prefer Lindsay if it's a flex spot, but I do like Galladay's upside. Davis or Reynolds? Davis? 
Corey Davis? I mean, Corey Davis to Reynolds. Give me Corey Davis. Corey Davis in cash. Uh, this was a Davis versus DJ Moore question until Funchess was announced in. I mean, Funchess being out, remember that was why we really wanted to get DJ Moore into lineups last week. Um, but even with Funchess there the week before, DJ Moore saw eight targets. He saw nine with Funchess out. I still think DJ Moore is in play. It's just that the price has escalated from 4,200 uh, in week 11 to 4,600 in week 12, and now is 5,600 in week 13. I think it's tougher. Uh, Driscoll viable in cash? You can, but I don't think it's necessary. My question is, what is that extra 1,000 to 1,500 going to open up for you that you can't get with going with somebody like Cousins at 55 or Winston at... 6,000 you know like if you build a lineup pardon me with those two other guys you know one with cousins and one with uh winston what do you like better like what can't you fit there's so much value this week so like what can't you fit with cousins or winston that is forcing you to come down to driscoll If I get my 11-year-old son a streamer camera for Christmas, would you consider rating him playing Fortnite? Sure. Breeder or Lindsay for cash? Um, Lindsay for me. I really like Lindsay this week. I like the price on Lindsay. I like the efficiency from him. I like the way the team is utilizing him. I like his inclusion in the pass game. I don't mind that he doesn't get 25 touches, especially if he's going to be as efficient as he's been all season long. He's just an electric sort of player. Uh, and teams don't have an answer for him. Hyde just a floor player? Do I see some ceiling him in turns? I mean, if he can get into the end zone, you know he's going to get the goal line work. He's out-snapped. Uh, he's out-snapped Yeldon like two, uh, four to one last game. Oh, they had like five touches. Uh, and at least two to one in all the games before that with Fournette there. Uh, and in the past year, Yeldon seen like two carries on goal-to-go situations, so he's going to get the goal line work. At 3,300, like what's a... What's a realistic floor-ish play? And when I say floor, let's talk about the meat of the bell curve, right? So, like, ignore the bottom 10%, ignore the top 10% outcomes for Hyde, and let's focus on that meat of the bell curve in there. What if he gets, like, 70 yards from scrimmage and two catches, right? And that's it, and no touchdown. You realize that's essentially his value expectation for 3,300. <laughs> like how modest a game is like, what if he has like 15 yards receiving and 55 yards rushing on 16 touches, two of them coming through the air. He essentially meets value. What if he has 15 touches, has a hundred total yards and happens to fall into the end zone and gets two catches. Now all of a sudden he's got 18 fantasy points for 3,300. Like I think, I mean, when you say a ceiling, I have to consider the price. Like, am I expecting a 30-point outburst from Carlos Hyde this week in that low total game uh, against an opponent that has done pretty well recently against opposing running backs? No. But, like, if he scores 14 points for 3.3, that's pretty darn good. And if he happens to get himself into the end zone on top of that, you know, and get you 20 for 3.3, that is going to be tough to beat unless... There's a different combination salary-wise that would have gotten you higher, right? If you're telling me that there's a 13-point realistic outcome for a 3.3 salary guy, you really have to consider that guy for cash. You just do. Theoretic cash, probably not for me. I don't think that you have to. There's so many value running backs this week that why are we considering theoretic? Ceiling's about 23. Yeah, I mean, whatever. That's fine. Thielen and Humphreys or Galladay and Sanders for cash. Uh, I like both, to be honest with you. I'm going to prefer the Thielen and Humphreys side, though. I'm just saying, for 3.3K, make a lineup with him, make a lineup without him. It's gonna, you're going to have to fit value in somewhere. You're going to fit it in at wide receiver, uh, or you're going to fit it in there. Like I think that Hyde has a better ceiling than Ellington. Even though Ellington's in a good matchup against the Rams and what they've done against slot wide receivers, they've been a little bit inefficient against slot wide receivers. Higher touchdown expectation for slot wide receivers against them. But like still, it's just Ellington. He's not going to have a really high A dot or anything. Thoughts on who to drop from FD Cash with new value open up? Gurley, CMC, Jones. 
I, I haven't looked there yet, so I don't know today. <laughs> Just considering uh, Riddick because they'll be chasing and KJ is doubtful. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like he's all right. But like, think about all the running backs that are in play from Lindsay down. So from 5,600 and down. And then rank all of them. Right? So like Lindsay, Ware, Hyde. People talked about Lamar Miller. You just brought up Riddick. Where does he rank on that list of five dudes? And seeing as how you can only play three, and at least one of those is going to be a high dollar guy, that leaves two. Tough to get him in. Would DJ... What? Would DJ... Oh, DJax. You say DJ, I think David Johnson. Uh, with DJax out, do you like Godwin over Humphreys? No, I like I prefer Humphreys over him. Let's see, who else do we have? <laughs> Dub Vicious, thank you very much for the hundred bits. Did I miss any questions that were up higher? I didn't. I've answered every question. Kaka, thank you for the 100 bits. Pivot from Cooks to Conley. Give room for A. Jones over Hyde. Yeah, you can do that. I don't hate that. Don't get rid of Jones. You're the Jones whisperer, and McCarthy will listen to you. <laughs> it's funny. He did nail Aaron Jones week a couple of weeks ago. The strategy change playing this week's Millie Maker versus Norma $20 Millimaker. Yeah, I'm not going to have 150 lineups. So I'm going to have a, a more funneled, you know, like my, my, I'm still going to mass, I'm going to mass multi-entry the lower dollar ones, the $10, the $20, maybe the $9 slant if it's still there this week, but I haven't looked. Uh, I will be max entering those, but like your strategy changes when you're, you know, when you're going to enter 10 or 15 lineups. Feeling a lock in cash, especially if Diggs is out. Uh, Diggs is questionable right now, so I'm, I'm going with both of them in. Does New England do everything they can to make someone else beat them? Uh, I mean, they've got Gilmore on the outside on Diggs, so I think that obviously the better matchup is in the in the slot for Thielen. Woods, Herndon, Lindsey, or Corey Davis, Olsen, and Breida? Give me the first one. What's your biggest difference in strategy and player selection between cash and GPP? My biggest difference in player selection between... Uh, cash and GPP cash. I'm looking for guys with a high floor. I want touches. I want targets. I want uh, inclusion on the goal line, uh, you know, packages that are out there. I want end zone targets. I want red zone targets. I basically want the entire package and I want what I can get for a salary, right? They all are going to have a ceiling, right? They're going to have ceiling possibility, but like I want guys that can get me a ton of volume because you can't it's harder to score when you got your you know your helmet in your hands on the sideline now if you look at a tournament i'm going to open that up a little bit i'm willing to take more chances i still want players that have a chance to get five times their salary uh, in terms of points you know especially at the mid to low range but like i'm willing to accept somebody that might have a four point day if there's a chance they might have a 20 point day and then when you consider looking at those things versus their you know not just their salary expectation but also uh things like percentage owned and how you can leverage the field like if everybody's going to be on alvin camaro one week but not many people are going to be on michael thomas i'm probably going to play michael thomas like last year there were spots where everybody's going to be on levy on bell like this is the best example i can come up with like levy on bell is going to be like 40 percent owned, but like antonio brown is going to be like 10 percent owned so it's very easy to just say okay i'm not going to play levy on bell in a few lineups and i'm going to play antonio brown because if the Steelers score like they should, but those touchdowns go to AB instead of Lev Bell, then all of a sudden the field is drawing dead with that 40% and your lineup is zooming past them because you have the lower owned guy in a leverage situation. Seahawks OC Brian Schottenheimer. First of all, I missed something. Thank you for the thousand bits, Studfy. I appreciate that, man. Taking over the number one spot on the bit donation chart at the top of the chat for the week. Resets every single Monday. Uh, Seahawks, Brian Schottenheimer expects Rashad Penny to have a bigger role in week 13. I hate the Seahawks coach speak. I never listen to it. They just, they're going to run the ball and they're going to run it a ton. <clears throat> That's all I know. If 
finally signed up for ESPN Plus. See the Best Buys column? Google Machine set me up right to it. There you go. I told you. All you got to do is Google Best Buys Week 13, and you'll find my article on ESPN. Got to be an ESPN Plus subscriber to do it, but it ain't that expensive. You get a bunch of streaming video. You can get it with, like, I think you can get it with, like, an ESPN The Mag subscription if you want the magazine delivered to your door. It's, like, five bucks a month. It's, and there's a free trial as well. Like, there's no excuse not to, like, get it if you want to read my article. Sutton versus Humphreys. Humphreys. Still, we're still betting on the come with uh, with Cortland Sutton, huh? One of these weeks, he's gonna have thirty fantasy points. Sure, he might, and then we'll have lo- we'll have win one week, and we'll have lost for ten straight. Just continuing to like, <laughs> just keep hammering Sutton. Do I think Jones has the same floor as Barkley this week? In terms of what? I think Barkley is ridiculous. Go through the magazine, it's a good deal. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Max Girl, thank you for the 100 bits. Finally caught you live. Well, here I am. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Luck for cash, sure. Don't hate it. I think there's other quarterbacks. I don't know that he's necessary. CMC or Barkley in cash? CMC and Barkley in cash. Value defense, the Packers look pretty good at 28. My locking Ebron with all the value that opened up, I think that Ebron's going to be one of the highest owned players on the slate. I think you're looking at like like 30 to 40% owned in tournaments. I think you're looking at about 30% owned uh, on somebody like uh, Carlos Hyde. I think those are the two highest owned players this week. I think that we're going to have to readjust with Spencer Ware now in the mix, probably maybe expected to be i don't know until we get news on that but like that's gonna open things up for you gridiron throne thank you man for four months of support i appreciate that thanks for keeping uh keep coming back and clicking that twitch prime button so chat y'all heard about twitch prime there's a subscription button it's like right up there like right above my head if you click subscribe and you're a member of amazon prime you probably have a Twitch Prime sub just sitting there waiting in your subscription box. If you don't, you can link your Amazon account to Twitch, giving you a free token that you can subscribe to me or anybody else on Twitch. It does not auto-renew. So be sure that you're using that Twitch Prime sub, that free Twitch Prime sub, on somebody. Support a streamer of your choice. You probably already used it on Ninja. (laughs) What is this Twitch Prime you speak of? From a game theory standpoint, if optimizers force players towards certain optimized plays, would the optimal play to be to fade those to a given extent? I mean, well, that's the first thing I said this year when I started working with Daily Roto uh, and promoting their product and all those sorts of things. uh, Exclamation point Daily Roto in the chat. If you want a link to go sign up, 10% off, use promo code SMIZLIFE at checkout. It's also down below uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, right in the description. Just click show more. No optimizer. It's not just like, okay, I... I bought in, so like I'm just gonna go in and click, make 150 lineups, boom, print money, spit it out. It's not how it works. Bbonds MVP, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, that's not how optimizers work. You got to spend a lot of time to make that thing spit out what you want it to spit out. So if you guys like uh, a certain player over another player, then you have to tell the optimizer to do that. You also have to realize that a lot of people are going to just do what I just said. Just going, okay, make me 10 lineups. Good. Put them in. Everybody's going to have very similar lineups with that. So they have no edge on the field. So you have to kind of work in your own leverage plays. You have to work in your uh, caps, your maxes, your minimums, everything else like that to try and make it spit out what you want. Uh, 1i78, thank you very much uh, for the help. Thank you very much for the three months of support. I appreciate that. Sir Twitchlot says, Tatman or Lupo? I like listening to Tim the Tatman on Lupo stream, but I prefer Dr. Lupo personally higher ceiling trey burton got a decent amount of looks with daniel in there he did i don't know if i trust daniel this week and that game is super low in terms of uh, pace and total ebron Lindsay or lacoste aaron jones uh i think ebron Lindsay is going to be the preferred route i think lacoste jones is going to be secondary to those how many lineups am I getting in the Millionaire Maker? I don't know. Somewhere between 15 and 30. I haven't decided. But 
but I'm going to multi-enter it. I just don't know how much I'm going to multi-enter it. I usually put 150 in the $20, which adds up to $3,000 a week. And I view that kind of as an anti-chip for me, uh, kind of like Caribbean stud, right? If you get a Royal flush and you don't have the anti-chip out there and you don't win the jackpot, you just, you played yourself. So I'm not trying to play myself. I'm going to have something in the Millie Maker every single week because if I have the nuts, I want to win as much money as I can possibly win. I haven't decided if I'm going to make 15 lineups, 20 lineups, 25 lineups, or 30 lineups for that thing, but we'll figure it out. Favorite jersey that I own? I mean, I don't, you know, Jay, <laughs> Jay-Z said it plus, said it best, right? Like, I don't wear jerseys. I'm 30 plus. Give me a nice pair of slacks, a nice pair of jeans, and a button-up. Have I been chasing cues this season? Yep, haven't queued. Ebron, Babytron, or Kelsey Godwin? I think Kelsey Godwin is fabulous for tournaments. I think it's an outstanding route to take in tournaments. I think that Ebron, Babytron is going to be extremely uh, chalky for cash and tournaments. It might be the right play, and sometimes the chalk just you have to play it based on not just what the chalk does, but the other lineup pieces around it, right? Like, if Godwin has, like, seven points, then who cares if he's 5% owned? Do I have a more narrow player pool than usual if I'm entering 15 to 30 versus 150? Yeah. I can't hit all the same spots. I'm going to hammer the ones that I really want the most. So I'm going to have a little bit of a smaller. Me and Pete went after Adam on the edge. What did we do? By the way, the video for the edge is up on Draft on DraftKings YouTube channel right now if you want to watch the video. What did we do to... To left hand. You've top five twice in queues with your three max on Yeah, I had like a 10th place finish in the Millie Maker this year. I had like a top five in a queue. Nah. Queues are hard, man. Winning qualifiers is tough. Always has been, always will be. Anytime all the money is up top, it's not good. Oh, it's root. Is it root or route? It could be both. It really can. Like situationally, you know, get your kicks on route 66? No. Is everyone forgetting what the Rams D looks like with Talib playing? I think so. I really do. Has the regression monster caught up to the Jerry Bark? I don't know. <laughs> we need like a lifetime report on every episode that Jerry has barked and what that player that she barked for did. She's been uh, off this year. Can't say route. Hates Turkey Day. Hates to give advice. Adam's a damn saint. <laughs> Hope he posts his lineup soon so I can get in my games. <laughs> no, I think you got the wrong podcast, Seaburr. That's not my game. Sunday night football question. Chance Keenan Allen gets more looks. I think that Keenan Allen's been getting a ton of looks, so I really like him. Maybe no Gordon workload for Eckler. No, I don't think... I mean, I think Eckler gets more than 16 touches, and he's been extremely efficient. You know? So I think that that's uh, extremely likely. I think that Keenan Allen sees between 8 and 12 targets. The question is, is the gazelle going to play? Is where a cash game lock over hide if Hunt is out? Uh, I think it's close. Depend Again, it's going to depend what you're doing with the rest of it. I think that they're somewhat similar. Obviously, they're 700. Up, okay, they're 700 apart. Where's in a much better offensive situation uh, against a team that can't stop the run? That's why I was on uh, Kareem Hunt earlier this week. Somebody that could potentially have a big game. I'm not expecting 20 carries out of him. Probably, you know, 15 to 16 carries. Maybe four or five targets as well. Uh, Hunt had seen a bunch of usage in the passing game with, with a bunch of passing touchdowns over the last five weeks. Or receiving touchdowns over the last five weeks. I think we see very similar from where in this spot. Uh, I think, yeah, I'd probably prefer him to hide if I can still fit everybody else that I want. Which I would assume that I probably can. Does Mahomes see a boost? No, Mahomes is Mahomes. Tournaments. Goffs, Woods, Reynolds, Babytron. What say you? Maybe? I think Reynolds is difficult priced. Too difficultly priced for me. Like he's what? He's tied for the fourth option on that offense behind Woods, behind Cooks, behind Gurley. 
Like he could catch a touchdown. Did I stop doing my five picks? Okay, Thanksgiving I I was just out of town. Then last week I forgot. I could get back to it this week. I'll put it up there if you guys want. If people were reading it, I'll put it up. I haven't like looked at the numbers on the site or anything. Hunt won't see discipline until next year. I mean, we'll we'll talk about that off the stream, guys. You can y'all can discuss that in the Discord if you want. I mean, it's too much to speculate about right now. There's just no point. You joked for the last couple years, hourly fantasy sports. Didn't they just put in like second half tournaments? It's 5.6 too much for DJ Moore. Uh, I think it's getting to the point where it's uncomfortable, which I think is going to hold the percentage down, which makes him a great tournament play for me. He definitely still has big play upside. He's up against a really bad defense. He's a leverage play, in my opinion, to all of the... Uh, to all the CMC ownership, everybody's going to flock towards Christian McCaffrey, and rightfully so. But who's to say that that uh, DJ Moore, even with Funchess back, because he did have eight targets in the last game that Funchess played, and then nine targets last week without him. What if he has eight targets again, but one of them goes for like 65 and a touchdown? Because he's had 20-plus yard runs and 20-plus yard receptions multiple times this year. So he's definitely got big playability. What if he busts one this week and then still has that volume, catches seven balls, but one of them goes for... 65 and a touch so now he's got 150 and a touchdown and maybe 25 or 30 rushing yards on top of that listener league is 10k that's true y'all gotta fill it now now the pressure's on you guys we did what we could to get it up there now you gotta fill it if it's not filled we'll go over it on the the anti-tinker cast on sunday morning right here on twitch.tv slash al underscore smizzle write that down second half tournaments are going to be insane dumb but fun yep is what it is. Yeldon or Hyde this week? Definitely Hyde. Yeah, Hyde is the play over Yeldon. Why is everyone on Baby Tron if uh, Talib will shadow? I mean, that's why I'm on. That's why I'm on the other dude. I mean, he's, I don't know if he shadows. We'll find out. But like, even if he plays 60% of snaps on Talib, there's 40% on Peters on the other side. It just depends on how much they move him. Mariota seems too cheap. He's cheap, but he's up and down. You're jamming Gurley, Barkley, CMC, and I don't care. And I don't think you're wrong. I think you can definitely do that. I think you could probably do more if you jam those two and then one of the mid-range guys if you don't want to go full punt, right? You can go with Jones or you can go with Lindsey uh, and then give yourself three more thousand to spend on a wide receiver. You know, hedge your lineups in second half tournaments. I'm not doing that. Humphreys, Conley, or Godwin? Um, I think that's the right order. I think Humphreys, then Conley, then Godwin is the order that I like for that trio. Is that all you guys got for me this week? Is that all we got? Which brings us to a great lineup construction question. Can I rank wide receivers 6,300 and below? I mean, I don't know. Maybe? Maybe? All right, well, Manny Sanders is is outstanding. Tyler Boyd I like better with A.J. Green back, but I like him less with Chris Harris defending him. So I think the volumes could still be there with him in the slot, but he's, uh, his efficiency could take a massive downturn. Uh, we could see a game like this one where he has like 10 or 11 po uh, fantasy points. I don't think that's going to cut it. I'd rather go with uh, Sanders here. T.Y. Hilton against Jacksonville. Uh, if you're playing the Jacksonville is just packing it in, card go with that uh lock it boomer bust i like more in davis to, to either three of four of these guys up in here i think that's about that's about it girly cmc and jones that is that like is that a question or a statement woodling because i like that trio or you want me to rank the like i don't know like they're that's fine do i prefer a build of three of the dudes Hurley, Gurley, Hurley, Gurley, man, CMC and Barkley with strong wide receiver value or B, locked in value where and hot, where or hide and get in a name wide receiver uh, and a name at tight end. It's just going to depend on volume, really. It's like it, the combinations that you can build this week for cash are much wider than we've seen the last few weeks uh, with all the value that's kind of opened up. And that does happen later in the season. So like, you know, as players get hurt and then, 
you know, all of a sudden miss and we had one suspension we might have another suspension for this weekend already with Fournette and then coming behind that with Kareem Hunt so like that's opened up a lot of value DraftKings has done a really great job so far this year of pricing up all the backups to like 4,000 to 5,000 at running back. So in case somebody gets hurt, it doesn't create this massive value tsunami, but that's what we have in this situation because they priced up Yeldon, but they left Hyde at 3,300. So like, just kind of is what it is. What are my favorite top wide receivers this week? Thielen, Hill, OBJ, Julio. Uh, OBJ would be last out of that group for me. I think that Julio is, is second to... I like Thielen, then Hill, then Julio, then OBJ. I saw that Alaska had an earthquake. Did they get a tsunami today? That really wasn't why I said that. Apologies if, if anybody took that that way. Value tsunami has just been something that I've said for years. Written, thank you very much for the three months getting that silver VIP badge in the chat. Yes, uh, he's a better play with Watkins out. Hunt possibly being out doesn't affect uh, Tyreek Hill, but in games that Watkins has seen 15 or less snaps or been out, because he's only been out once this year, uh, Tyreek Hill jumps from like seven and a half targets to like 12 targets a game. So Tyreek definitely gets a bump. Uh, but he's going to have to score as they get up early because I don't think that the Raiders are going to be able to keep pace with them. Have we talked Goodwin or Godwin versus Conley yet? Joined late. We haven't. I prefer Conley to Godwin. And I prefer Humphreys to both. Am I still on Everett this week? Not as much as I was on the... I mean, enough value opened up that you don't need it. You know, we got... If you want a value tight end, I probably prefer Lacoste. I think Everett's in play for deep tournament, you know, sleeper type guy. You're trying to leverage like a 1-2% guy. You're going to have like 8% or something of him. Maybe he scores a touchdown. Uh, gets a few yards, but there's enough value. You don't need to make reaches right now. So what you're saying is fade the value running backs and GPPs construct differently and print all the money. Okay, well, yeah, kind of. Like, look, if 40% of the field's going to be on Eric Ebron this week, right? Everybody's going to go to Eric Ebron. And look, rightfully so, right? He's been fantastic when Doyle's been out. What about him? Just look at this here. There's a few GPP winning type scores in there. If everybody's spending 4,000 or less at tight end and you spend 7,000 or 6,000 or 5,400, you're already differentiating your lineup from everybody else. Because everyone else is paying down there, which gives them more salary to pay up for somewhere else. So just by changing that one spot off of the main chalk play, you're going to have a different combination for the rest of your lineup than everybody else is going to have. The other way to do it, everybody pays down in this range here. Now, yeah, there's definitely going to be people on him, right? But like, what if you just come up a little bit to here? I mean, are we, are we going to pretend that Cam Newton doesn't have 25 plus point upside. I mean, he's done it once, twice, three, four, five so far this year at a price point that most people aren't going to hit. People are definitely going to hit Mahomes at 7,600. You know, they're going to click on that button in tournaments. I don't care how expensive he is, they're going to click Mahomes. They're probably not going to click Cam Newton as much as they click somebody like Aaron Rodgers at 62. Uh, Jameis Winston at 6K, Lamar Jackson at 59, Andrew Luck at 58. All these guys are bunched. You know, 5,500, 5,600, 5,800, 5,800, 5,900, 6,000. Bunch of guys in here that are bunched. I don't care which one is high and which one is low. You're going to carry 50, 60% of the quarterback ownership just from 5,500 to like 6K. So if you go above or below that, you're going to differentiate your lineup. It's not just about differentiating that one spot. It's about differentiating one or two other spots when you fade the chalk. So you can fade the chalk by going with somebody that's similarly priced. Like, let's say you don't want to play Ebron. You're like, you know what? I like my lineup. I don't want to eat the chalk with Ebron at 4,200. I'm going to play Greg Olson at 41 against Tampa Bay. Maybe he scores two touchdowns against a really bad defense, and I run away with it. And maybe... Um, 
maybe Ebron only has like 80 receiving yards on, you know, maybe has 50 receiving yards on four catches as nine points. But I play a guy that has 20 plus 25 points at the same price point. And then the rest of my lineup still looks great. It's what I like. So there's a couple of ways to be contrarian in tournaments and build contrarian lineups. One, be contrarian at the same price point so that the rest of your lineup kind of matches or differentiate from what the public is doing. If the public is saving at tight end, spend. If the public's spending at tight end, save. If they're spending on running back, save at running back and spend a wide receiver. Very easy to be contrarian in that way every single week and still pick players are in good spots. If everybody's spending on two, at least two running backs, save on two running backs and spend up at wide receiver and tight end. Just do something different if you're trying to be contrarian. Can I expand more on my Humphreys call? Game log versus Carolina is good, but does his role change much with DJX out? And it's not just the Carolina game. I'm not just looking at that one game. Fifty yards, fifty yards, fifty yards, fifty yards, fifty yards, fifty yards. With Winston, he has an eighteen percent target market share. Winston just gets him the ball. He has a good floor. You know, if you figure he's got a four catch, 50 yard floor, that gives him nine points to go from right there. Four catches and 50 yards. You know, that doesn't even include touchdown equity. No touchdown upside here. Just nine points for a 4.2 guy. And I'm thinking that that's around his floor with Winston at quarterback who targets him 18% of the time. Which 2,800 DSTs are appealing for cash? Well, for 2,800, Green Bay. And Joku for 100 more. Exactly. That's kind of the, the thing that I was getting at before. You know, like, you can be different in a lot of different ways. R. Henderson. Sounds like you've done this before. Once or twice. I once won a jacket. Winston likes Humphreys. He does. Rank Robert Woods, Manny Sanders, Josh Gordon, and Corey Davis for GPP. Manny Sanders, then Corey Davis, then Woods, then Jordan. Tlaib just activated? Awesome. Do I think Foster can get value this week against Miami? It's not a lot of volume. It really isn't. He had three targets, caught two of them. One went for 75 touchdown. He had four targets, three of them. One of them went for 47. I mean, he could. I think he's thin. You know, like I think he's kind of thin. Chiefs or Rams D? Give me the Rams. Uh, I do like the Chiefs defense too. Tell me that Aqib Talib activation gets people off Galladay. Uh, I think it hurts him for sure. LaShawn, 20 touches against an awful Miami run D. Could be a nice GPP. Yeah, I don't hate that. How about Zay Jones? How about him? Yeah, I mean, I like McCoy's value, uh, volume. He's gotten like 20 touches a game for the last few games. The problem is he's just on a not a good offense. But at least he's getting the volume and the price isn't too high. There's so many running backs this week too. How do I feel about Rams defense and Galladay in the same lineup for GPP? I don't love that. Not really something that I like. I don't like to fly in the face of stuff. Like I don't like to spit into the wind. Never works out. The Bills wide receivers seem like the Jags 2.0 in terms of unpredictability. Exactly. And they've got an unpredictable quarterback. You know, like he looks talented. He's doing some cool things, but like, who knows? On a week-to-week -week basis, it's not predictable is what I'm trying to get at. Joker versus terrible Texans tight end touchdown defense for an Ebron pivot. Yeah, like all, exactly. Like when you come up on all those different things, that's fine. Thoughts on Saints-Cowboys last night? I think that uh, Ezekiel Elliott looked like he was in good shape. Hard 
Hardest week of the year for you? Settle on a court? Yeah, exactly. This is going to be a tough week, guys. And it's going to be a tough week because there's a lot of options. So you've got to take some time this weekend. We got It's Friday, right? So we're going to meet again on Sunday morning for the Anti-Tinkercast right here on Twitch. We'll get here. Uh, 45 minutes before lock is when I'm going to log on. After I'm finished working on my lineups, I'm going to come here and take questions from you guys. And it's not an anti-tinkercast so that you guys don't do anything. It's an anti-tinkercast to keep me from tinkering with my lineups. I'm done working. I just want lock to get here. Start the damn games already. So I'll be back then uh, to go over as much and as, as many questions as you guys have. Demok, thank you very much for the three months in a row. Appreciate that. If you guys would drop a like on this video, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll see you guys on Sunday morning. We'll go over any questions that you have right here on Twitch. The link's down below. If you drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel. Ring that notifications bell. That would be great. Subscription button's right there. Here's a link to another video. Hopefully, I'll see you guys Sunday. Bye.